You're listening to the weekly Parsha podcast with Ari Goldwag, recorded with Hashem's never ending assistance in Ramah Pesha Mishra 5781, 2021. This week's Parsha is Parsha's Chukas, and at the beginning of our Parsha, we have the obligation a person who becomes Tame Mace, he becomes impure from coming in contact with a dead body. So there's an obligation to purify oneself through the process of the Paraduma, the red heifer. The Torah refers to this as a as a chuk, zeis chukas ha'teira. This is a chuk, a concept which is very difficult to understand, or perhaps impossible to understand. I'd like to share with you a medrash which I have read in the past. I don't know if it was last year, a few years ago, but it's a very powerful and deep medrash. There's lots of ways of understanding it, and I'd like to share with you a very deep thought based on this. You know, whenever we have a chuk. Whenever we have a law that's deep, we don't understand what it means, still we need to plumb its depths. We need to try to understand exactly what is it. There is some depth. There is always something that we can take away. There's always something we can understand. And I'd like to share with you this medrash and try to understand it together. Says the medrash like this. It's an unusual thing. I'm going to give you a little bit of the end before, the, before we start so that we can have a foundation for what's going on here. There's an, a lot of unusual things about the Parah Aduma. One thing that I'm thinking about, and I'd like to hold in mind as we, as we explore this idea together, is that we take a red heifer, completely red. Red always represents the concept of din, of judgment. Completely red, we burn it. Fire is also, obviously, we talk about Gehenim, hell as the place that has fire. Fire is something which is judgment. We burn Paraduma, the red heifer. We take the ashes, and the ashes are an integral p- component of the process of becoming pure, getting rid of this tumor, this impurity from having come in contact with the dead. So we have this din, din, judgment, more and more fire, red, this idea, okay? So hold on to that thought, because that's part, I believe, of what's going on here. It says the Medrash, Another thing, another thing, one more introduction before we read it. And that is that when it comes to the Paraduma, there's an unusual idea, a, a contradiction. The contradiction is that the person, the Kohen, the priest, who does the sprink excuse me, the sprinkling of the water that includes within it, it's called the Mechatas, the water that has in it the Efer Hapara, the ashes of the red heifer, the person who is sprinkling it upon becomes pure. But he himself, the one who's doing, who's making the effort to bring about someone's purity, he himself becomes impure. He doesn't have the level of impurity of someone who's come in contact with the dead. But he has a certain level of impurity. So the Medrash points out part of the idea of a chayk, of a law which is impossible to understand, is that there are inherent contradictions. And we're going to see a number of places where we have inherent contradictions. We need to understand what is the idea of these contradictions. Zeis chukas, zeshamar akasiv mi teintar mitame loy echad. The verse says in Eov, in Job, chapter 14, verse 4, Who would give pure from impure? Is it not one? We see, and we're going to list, we're going to list off a number of different circumstances where you see that something pure came out of something impure. In our case, the person becomes pure while the person who's the, the, the person who's being done for, who was impure, becomes pure. The person who's doing the process, he himself becomes impure. So something pure is produced from something impure. Kigain Avram Terach. Avram Avinu, Abraham, the first of the Jewish people, of the people of Israel, the forebear. He was somebody who was pure, and he came from someone who was impure, Terach. His father was an idolater. Not only was he an idolater, he was a major, major part of the, the idolatry world. He sold idols. He was part of Nimrod's court. Avram was pure. Something pure comes out of something impure. Chizkio me'achaz, Yoisha me'amon. There were two great kings of the Jewish people who were tzaddikim, very righteous individuals, Chizkiah and Yoshia, and their fathers were extremely evil. 
great, the, perhaps the greatest Rishonim of all time, the most wicked of all time. So you see someone pure comes out of someone impure. Mordechai Mishimi, Mordechai, the protagonist, along with Esther Amalka of the story of Purim, he came out of someone who was a Russian named Shimi, Mordechai ben Shimi ben Kish. I'm sorry, Mordechai ben Yair ben Shimi. His grandfather was a Russia, but he was a great tzaddik. Yisrael me'avde kechavim. The people of Israel, there's two different ways to understand this. There's a way I understood it. There's a way my son understood it. And most of them, unfortunately, actually say like my son. So I'll say that shot first. The Jewish people, despite being surrounded by idolaters, despite being in the melting pot of Mitzrayim, of Egypt, despite having gone through so many Goliaths, the Jewish people retained their Jewish character. My pshah was uh, the people of Israel were produced from, right? Avram Avinu was the first, he came from Terach, but the people, the Jewish people came from the non-Jewish world. They came from the idolatrous world. A nation was born within this womb of an idolatrous world. The world to come, which is a world of purity, a world of gemul, a, a world of revelation of Hashem's kindness and light, that world comes out of the womb, so to speak, of the darkness of this world, where the light is not so revealed, where the light is hard to see. Now, we're going to read more soon, but I'd like to point out that there's there's different ways to understand what's going on here. There's different ideas that we could take out of this. One is that it seems to be a tamiya, it seems to be a wonder, like it doesn't seem likely or, or possible that someone who's so impure, a tarach, could produce someone who's such a tzaddik, an Avram Avinu, an Abraham. We're just pointing out, in the Pashup shot here, we're just pointing out the, the fact that it's unusual to see these two things next to each other. Usually a child, a son, is similar to the father. Usually those who we're around have an effect on us. We're affected by our society. So it's unusual to see that something like this would happen, that someone so great, someone so pure, would be juxtaposed to, some, to somebody so evil. And Terach was so bad, he actually took Avram and he brought him to the king for heresy because he spoke of one God. And it was against the idea of the times that they should worship idols. He brought his own son to be killed. All of these examples are examples of a contrast, which are an unlikely contrast. That's the simple understanding. But there's something deeper going on here, and this I find in the Imre Yesher. Uh, maybe we should wait until, until, we, until we read the idea inside. Let's see. Let's see the next words in the Medrash. Medrash says, Who did this? Who commanded this? Who decreed this? Was it not the one, the only one? One God. There's one God. He's done this. He created good, he created evil. And says the Emre Yosher, and I believe the other Mephorshim, so we saw a lot of stuff together, my son and I, so I don't remember exactly where we saw it, but the Mephorshim explained that if evil always produced evil, then we would know that there's, or if good, and if good only produced good, so it used to be, people used to think that there's two different forces, and there are, even those who believe this today, there are two different forces, disparate forces, that fight for ascendancy in the world. There's the force of good, the force of evil, but they're not sourced in the same source. There's not one overarching good being. There's a battle between good and evil, they're not, they're not connected, those two forces. What we see from this Medrash, says the Mephorshim, Say the Mephorshim, is that it's possible to have something good come out of evil. And the reverse as well. In order to teach us that there's one God. There's one God and He produces good and He produces evil. Yitzhar Or, Uvare Chayshach. He produces light. He creates the darkness. He produces good. He creates evil. From the fact that from within evil, something bad can be produced. I'm sorry, so from the fact that within evil, something good can result, 
shows that within the darkest darkness is still a light. Within the, the person who's the farthest away from God, we could say, there's always that pintalia, that little spark of, of goodness. So that's one concept. But there's an even deeper concept here. Taman Taninon Baharat Kigris Ba'adam Tame Parcha Bakule Tahor. Says the Majesty, we find an, an amazing and interesting thing. Very difficult to understand. If let's say a person has tsaras, has he has leprosy, it's a spiritual leprosy. So if the Baharis, if this patch of tsaras, of leprosy, is in one location, the size of a gris, it's about a dime or a nickel, if it's that size, so he becomes tummy, he becomes impure. However, if that same leprosy is not just in one place, but in, it covers his entire body, so then the person is tahor, he's considered pure. Why? Who's the one that decreed such a thing? Who created this law, this concept? It's God. God created a world where it's possible that just in one place it's so it's bad. But if it's everywhere, it's it's pure. What's the idea? What is the idea? So listen with me to the to the Imre Yosher. He says something really, really deep. This is a, an, a, 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 just an amazing Yisrael, an amazing foundational concept. If we understand this idea, we can have a much deeper understanding of what's going on in the world. And by the way, we keep saying the word, Yechud HaShelolem, the, the Yechid HaShelolem, Yechud HaShelolem, the one, God is, is the one force behind everything. Because really, good and bad are all somehow good. God is absolute goodness. But this is one of the secrets of what's the understanding of bad? Tanin Baharis Kigris Ba'adam Tamei the Emre Yosher says Shazay Yosher Zarus. This is more strange. Shatumet Tiye Ba'atzma Simen Tahara. That something which is Tamei, something which is impure, should be a sign of purity. Loy Levad Tahar Mi Tamei Mishne Yufim. Not only if you have something pure coming out of something impure in two separate bodies. For example, Abraham came out of Terach. Terach was impure. Abraham was pure. So it's not it's not only if it's two separate bodies, but even in one body itself, one person has a leprosy on his hand in one spot, impure. But if it covers his entire body, that amount of impurity creates purity. What's the idea? tahara ela hatoma. Purity comes as a result of a great flowering of impurity. Listen to this carefully. This is counterintuitive, but it's something awesome. The Zezachus Yaitzer. This is even more rarefied. It's more pure. Okay, exactly what the idea is. Exactly what he's saying word for word. I'm not sure completely, but the foundation of this idea is as follows. You see evil. And there's more and more evil in the world. It's scarier and scarier. Things are coming to a head. That's a sign. That great purity, great goodness is about to be revealed. And I know I've said this before. I want to say it again. And I'm sure that You've had this experience too at some level. In life, so many times, we experience great difficulties, great challenges. Look at, look at Corona. What a challenge, what a difficulty. Look at the, a person who's gone through financial challenges, financial difficulties, gets to the other side, rocky patch in his relationship with his spouse. What happens when you get to the end? On the other side, there's just an awesome light. An awesome light. I felt in the middle, and I, I may have shared this, but I felt in the middle of the emotional roller coaster that we've gone, we went through through the Mayron tragedy. I felt in the middle like this sense of closeness to Hashem, closeness to God. So many people were making kabbalists, accepting upon themselves to fulfill more mitzvahs. For more commandments, more kindness, more charity, more tzedakah, etc. 
Such a burst of light comes out of such a deep darkness. It's such a chiddush, it's such a depth, it's such a beautiful thing, and I think that we all know it to be true. We all sense it inside of our hearts that this is true. And I know I've spoken about it, and I'll continue to speak about it, but we look around the world, and we look at the lies that are perpetuated by the media, by, about, about Israel, by, by our enemies, by the Arab world, parts of the Arab world, by those who are out for our destruction, and they may even be members of our own people, heaven forbid. And we look at the darkness and we say, what is this about? What is this about? Tell the truth. Who's, who's, who's the good guy? Who's the bad guy? Who's, who has the right to this place? Who belongs here? And who doesn't? Who belongs in the land of Israel and who doesn't? Who's real and who's fake? Who's looking for life and who's looking for death? So we hear more and more death. We hear more and more anger. We hear more and more lies. And we say to ourselves, how could it be that the lies, they're winning? And I believe that in this measure is a very powerful thing. The way to erase death, the way to get out of the darkness, sometimes we would like it to be that it would be through more and more light, and that's true. But you see, there's another way, and that's what this is teaching us. This is the hidden path of the Torah, and this is the concept of Yichud, the unification of God. And that is that God is so great and so good that He's not just there when there's good. It's not just there when it's revealed an open good. But he has planted within the deepest bad, the deepest evil, the deepest revelation of good, the deepest revelation of good, the ultimate life, the ultimate connection. Once a person purifies themselves through the Paraduma, through this red heifer, through so much din, through so much judgment, fire, red, burning, Someone else has to become Tami in order for me to become Tower. Someone else has to become impure in order for me to become pure. What is that about? It's about getting to the other side. It's about the power of life. The power of purity. The <laughs> tough as nails, stronger than steel, essence of good, which remains untainted even though it traversed a world of evil, even though not only did it traverse, it has to come out of that deeper evil. That's the, the, that's the, the amazing depth, the amazing... I don't, I don't want to say joke, but the amazing humor of, the, of Hashem, of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, of God, that the goodness comes from the darkness from the darkness that's what we see here and the darker it is the more hope we need to have that we're coming closer to that point in history when we will be purified we'll step out of this dark world this world of of Hester of hiddenness where God we can't see God openly into a world where God is revealed to all people God pours out in all flesh Ruach HaKadosh divine inspiration we all experience that. We will experience that. And it's going to be soon. The deeper the darkness, the more hope we need to have. Me, Asakain. Me, Tzivakain. Me, Gazarkain. Who was the one who did this? Is it not the one, the only one? Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. The God of Rachamim, of mercy, and the God of judgment. The really one. The darkness and the light. They seem to be separate and disparate, but really they're one. They're unified in awesome good. I want to bless you. I ask you to bless me. Hashem should help us to be able to have an experience if we're going through challenging times in the whole world. Who's not going through challenging times today? If we're going through challenging times to, to remember and to hold on to the hope, hold on to the knowledge that good is on the way and that the deeper the darkness, the greater the revelation of light that comes on the other side. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful Shabbos. 
This podcast was made possible through the gracious donations of listeners like you. For more podcasts like this, please visit www.arigoldwag.com or search on iTunes, Ari Goldwag.